Well, hello there, friends. Stag here. Welcome to my channel where I showcase the creation process of my creepy cute, lowbrow, and gothic fantasy art and ramble the art things. This painting is called The Doctor's Wife. I could talk about inspiration and background, but that really takes the fun out of it. It was a lot of fun to create, and overall the painting took about 24 hours to paint. It's total hours, not just over a day. With that much footage, it was a pretty extensive task to time lapse all that down into a smaller video. So I've been a bit away from YouTube, though it hasn't been far from mine. I've been terribly busy. For months I worked on a project and I was just no longer feeling up to it. I just had to step away from it for a bit and I wasn't really dreaming doing the little paintings for it and I didn't even bother getting all the footage so I can't even post those to YouTube either. But I just found myself getting kind of frustrated and I wanted to paint something bigger for my creepers and haunts. Um, it was worth it working on this. It was a nice break from what I was doing and I really enjoyed the process. Uh, the original painting is available as well as prints from both my website and my Etsy shop. You can find the links below in the description. I don't normally plug my Etsy shop, but it does indeed exist. The prices some days are better on my Etsy and other times they might be on my website because the sales don't normally coordinate because they're way too separate platforms and Prices and fees vary, for me anyway. So they've just kind of always operated as like way two separate entities. I have been updating Etsy with some changes that I haven't yet rolled all out to my site, Low Brown Misfits. Um, I now offer digital coloring pages on my Etsy, which is something new. You could only get them prior from my Patreon. and. Patreon will still have pages as rewards every month, but they will be newer pages from future books as opposed to... I mix them up, sometimes it would be future pages, sometimes it would be older stuff or whatnot. I had some pages I had done specifically uh, for Patreon. I don't necessarily have a book plan for them to be in, but they exist so they'll probably be in a book someday unless I like completely forget where I put a file and that it existed. I also now have free shipping on US orders over 35 for both shops. I just rolled it out over to my site recently. And new to Etsy is uh, free US shipping on prints. That is, that is only on Etsy right now. And I had brought back the 5x7 prints. They are not on my website either. Um, it takes a while to update things and dealing with all the listings and I was just fiddling around on Etsy. And eventually I don't know what I'll keep and what will still operate different, but my website's going to be updated as well with stuff. I will roll out the 5x7 prints there eventually. I haven't offered them probably like a... maybe two years, I don't know, I haven't paid attention to time. <laughs> I have been working on a lot of different fun projects like comics and other things. I'm not necessarily public, it's more personal and they'll be up eventually. Like I post little peeks every now and again on Instagram. I've also been thinking about what I'd like to do with videos going forward. For those that miss me when I am gone, I am on Twitch where I do stream. I don't have a set schedule. Sometimes I stream 
during the day. I'm in Eastern time zone. Um, other times I might stream in the evening. It's just whimsical. I don't want to put too much pressure on it because then I promise to stream and then I can't. Then it just sucks and I don't, I don't want to be like that. So it's just, it is what it is. You can just catch me live sometimes on Twitch. Um, best thing to do is probably in, enable notifications or something. I know last year with all the changes that were coming for 2020 for YouTube, I was a little uneasy and I didn't, like I didn't wash my hands of YouTube or give up or anything. But I was a little concerned on how my content would be classified to be honest. Though it's not intended for little ones, I do paint cartoonish figures and my experience of the drunk little bots filtering through the content on YouTube has not been great. Like, I don't have ads on my stuff right now, but <laughs> when I did, they, they were, they did not like me too much. Finding time to edit the videos is the hardest because it's so much footage and it bogs down my computer for so long. Like, I think this painting, for the first run through to time lapse it down, it took probably like eight hours to condense it down so I could condense it down again. Like, it's just so much footage. Like, I run through my days just like, I have so much stuff to do and that I want to do and like, I, I do pretty good with getting stuff done, it's just... Then I have like bad health days and that can, <laughs> I really can't help or plan for. I have this thing where like every other month or so my stomach swells and when I feel it start, I have to make sure everything is caught up because I might have to spend a week on my couch holding a bucket. Cause if I, if I like I move, I'm going to just throw up. Thankfully it's happening less frequently now than it was, but it, it was it, it was pretty bad for a while. It used to be monthly. It's just another random lupus thing where something in my body just decides to swell because every day is whimsical. I don't really care to talk about health stuff. It's depressing and it's personal, but as my art has become more and more an extension of myself, it expresses those things and it definitely makes me want to talk about it less. It's just a reality that I just wake up to every day. But it affects my art and it affects my business and I feel like sometimes I gotta put it out there because I'm not that I mean to disappear, it's just sometimes I have to. This weekend, I think it was this weekend, I started painting these little illustrations to test painting acrylics on watercolor paper that I have, that I do ink work on, which is terrible for ink work because it actually ruins the pens, but I like the texture. But anyway, I have this watercolor paper and I decided to paint with it like little acrylic paintings. It was a fun little project. I wanted to make sticker designs, but I couldn't justify painting on a piece of wood, which is like my, I want to say preferred surface to paint on. It's just what I always paint on. So I'm used to dealing with the surface, like paper. There was a little bit of a learning curve, but once I caught on, it kind of, you just have to work really fast on it with the acrylics. And there is a bit of a color shift as it dries. But I didn't want to paint on wood for like a single sticker design. And it, it seemed stupid to like sand it off to repaint something else on it, you know? So I was just like, I'll just paint on little cards and then, you know, the little cheap originals if somebody wants them because it's kind of a waste for me to just throw away art or store it, which I do that with a lot of my concept sketches. They mostly get tossed or just sitting in a stack because it's like, I might revisit this later. I don't keep a sketchbook. I made a sketchbook, like I, I actually hand down my own sketchbook thinking I would use it, and I don't use it. 
I use printer paper, like some kind of barbarian. But anyway, normally like my stickers, like they're objects that are removed from my paintings, but that doesn't really communicate well with all my paintings because sometimes this object might be behind another object or something. Like this painting, like the girl herself wouldn't work well as a sticker because the way her hair is, but I could like cut out the whole tank and make a sticker if I wanted to. But some, some paintings, are they just differ. It, it just depends on what's in it. So, but like painting is probably like my specialty is what I'm best at. Like, yeah, I can ink some stuff. I know how to draw a line, but I'm not great at inking. It, it used to be my specialty years ago. I used to be good at it, but now it's just... Eh... I get scared at those permanent lines that I can't paint over. So I know, I know that holds me back a lot because like you can't really remove the ink. Like you can paint over it, but you can tell there's paint over that ink. Like it's just a thing. Like the texture, uh, I can't deal with the difference in texture. And you can you can see the white brush strokes on that paper if you screw up. And then you gotta try to ink over the paint and then it's just not right. Nothing, nothing's right. Just looks a little bit off. And like, so my only other option for like doing stickers was to do them digitally, which I had been doing. Like I do the digital art when I do the coloring pages. So like I started doing some black and white digital art for sticker designs. And uh, like I'd like to do more digital black and white art that's more finished and refined for like t-shirt designs because honestly I hate the full color t-shirts that people have made with like paintings on it but you can do the sublimation printing on like a light shirt would work a lot better when they when you see that some of those shirts put the all over prints where they got them on the sleeves too because I think that's done through sublimation um, but when you're printing like over a dark shirt, the colors look all funny and you gotta lay down a layer of white first and it's just, it looks bad to me. So it's just, and I, I'm the type of person that it didn't even occur to me people might be wearing light shirts. <laughs> so that, that doesn't even matter. But I don't wear light shirts, so I have like one gray shirt with a wolf on it. I, whatever. But it just occurred to me that that's a thing that, that that you can just take out everything I just said. I can edit it out, but I, I think I still got like a minute to fill yet. <laughs> Words. I've rattled on long enough. There is no point for me to like play music. For a little bit and be quiet. I may as well just keep talking uncomfortably at the mic. But going forward, like, these little illustrations kind of like opened up more that I can do with designing little sticker things because I like to make more. I want to do little sticker sheets and sets, little objects, little, little illustrations. Like, uh, my Daisy Bones painting, like I thought of, uh, be really cool to have, like companion stickers. I get her made as one, and uh, have like rib cage with flowers in it, and just a bunch of different flowers and bone themed stickers together. I think that'd be really cool as a set. But I really like that painting for some reason because she's so happy. But I am not a digital artist, the least bit. Like, I just can draw some lines on my Cintiq screen, that's it. Like, I can't color, so, like, this was my option for, like, colored stickers. Like, hey, can I paint them? And I can. Who'd have thought you could paint on paper? <laughs> wow, I learned something new. But I was thinking of a 
possibly doing a video of a uh, it might be too long for a video but going through all the sticker designs and then like as I'm painting them and then doing like the sticker making process but it might be too long but it would be kind of like a cool longer vlog but I, I don't know like it took me a while to get around to um, things I might be thinking about for the YouTube channel but that was like a while ago I mentioned that well anyways guys thanks for watching uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram where I post daily you can also find me on Patreon for my monthly mystery packs and digital coloring pages. And as always, you can find a menagerie of prints, paintings, pins, stickers, and more featuring my art even in Oracle Deck at lowbrowmisfits.com. Until next time. Bye.